Hello again. This is Michael Lectures on Applying Newton's First Law. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Last time we introduced the idea of inertia, uh, Newton's First Law, the idea that things are going to keep doing what they're doing. So if a truck and a stone are moving along the highway at a fast speed, and the truck applies its brakes, well, the stone isn't strapped in, it doesn't have brakes, so it's going to keep doing what it was doing, which means it's going to keep moving, or at least until the back end of the truck gets in the way. So this reminds us of Newton's first law. Um, the idea that if all forces on something are balanced, uh, or in other words, they cancel out, then the thing is going to do one of two things. It's going to either remain sitting still, if that's what it was doing, or it's going to continue at a constant velocity until another force is applied to it. Now, as it's written, we kind of think of it as if we see either of these um, two things, sorry, if we know the net force on it is zero, then we're going to see either of these two things happen. But the real power of Newton's first law is actually the other way around, which is if we see either of these two things happen, then we know that the net force on it must be zero. So for example, if something is sitting still or going a constant velocity, then we know the net force on it is zero. So sitting still, your immediate first thought, if you see that, should be, hey, the net force on that must be zero. All forces are canceling. If you see something going a constant velocity, your immediate first thought should be, hey, all forces on that are canceling, even if I can't see some of the forces that are on it. Um, and while this one might be counterintuitive, let's walk through the math behind it real fast, because that might help explain it. We know that net force equals mass times acceleration. And we know if something is a constant velocity, the velocity isn't changing. So if the velocity isn't changing, then the acceleration is zero, because acceleration is change in velocity per time. So if acceleration is zero, and we plug that into mass times acceleration for net force, we're always going to get zero here for net force. So really what this is saying with Newton's first law it's just that if something's not changing its velocity, we know it's not accelerating. And if it's not accelerating, we know there's no net force on it. Um, if you kind of walk it through that way, it seems a little bit more logical, uh, but it's still kind of weird to think about. So let's give it a shot with a few practice scenarios. First, you push on a 350 kilogram rock with a force of 1000 newtons, but the rock doesn't move. Go ahead and draw a free body diagram of this scenario. Pause the video and give it a shot, please. Okay, so let's go through this one. We know the rock's not moving, so my first and immediate thought is not moving, all forces must cancel out. In other words, the net force must be zero. So let's walk through what those forces might be, even though I can't see all of them. Really, all I see is, hey, here's a rock and I'm pushing, so why isn't it moving? Well, first we know, since it's here on Earth, there's the force due to gravity pulling it down, um, and that is its weight. So 3,500 newtons of weight pulling it down. But it's not falling, so we know something is pushing it up to prevent it from falling. That happens to be the cliff side here. So it has a normal force of 3,500 newtons also pushing on it, but in the upward direction to cancel that out. So far, our net force is zero. Great. Well, we know that you are pushing on it with a force of 1,000 newtons. Um, so immediately, my next thought must be based on Newton's first law and the fact that the net force has to be zero, is that there has to be something else pushing back with a thousand newtons. You may not know what that is, but you could draw in an arrow anyways and be like, right, force pushing back on it must be 1000 newtons. Who knows what it is, but it's there and we know it exists. In this case, it's most likely friction. Uh, so friction would be 1000 newtons kind of pushing back. Let's do another practice. Uh, in this one, a little boy pulls a 12 kilogram wagon at a constant speed in a straight line. He's pulling with a force of 98.2 newtons. Go ahead and draw a free body diagram to describe this scenario. Again, pause the video, give it a shot, please. Okay, let's go through this. So the boy's moving at a constant velocity. That means there is no acceleration, which means the net force must be zero. So let's figure out what those forces might be. First, we know since it's on Earth, there's the force of weight on the wagon pulling it down. That's 120 newtons. But it's not falling, so we know there must be some force from the ground preventing it. That's the normal force in this case. But based on the problem, we also know there is a pull on the wagon. So 
we know that the kid is pulling 98 with 98.2 newtons of force but since the net force on it is zero it's not accelerating which means even though this kid's pulling on it really what he's doing is kind of canceling out some other force that's over here or some other force is canceling out his pull that happens to be friction or something kind of uh, the force from the grass like pushing back on it because it's like a rough path or something like that but that force is preventing this wagon from accelerating um, so since both of those are canceling each other out and they're in opposite directions the acceleration is zero and therefore it goes a constant velocity so this is why it seems like things need a force to move or to keep moving I should say but in reality, usually what we're doing is actually just canceling out some friction that we can't see. So Newton's first law gives us the power to like realize that some of these forces might exist that we can't see, and this lets us kind of identify when they might be present. Now, if you wanted to include that the wagon was moving in your free body diagram, um, remember you can always add a little arrow up top to say, hey, the velocity is this way, but we always only put forces attached to our free body diagrams. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes. One to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.